got one. Oh, guys, this one's actually the biggest one of the day came on this thing. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on the Mystery Tackle Box channel. Today, myself and my buddy Christian are out fishing a local golf course pond trying to avoid any players, but uh, with the rain yesterday, I think that might be out of the cards. Speaking of that, kind of stirred up the murkiness within this pond right here. It's definitely a lot more stained than our first visit to fish this thing recently where we caught a couple good fish, but I want to tell you guys a little bit about what we're throwing today. All 10,000 fish products. We're gonna have fun to do something a little bit different for you guys. We're gonna be throwing around some of the shimmer swimmers, some of the shimmer shads, drop shot. We're gonna be throwing around some of the 10,000 fish saw craws, probably Texas rigged, possibly as a swim jig or chatterbait trailer, just depends on what these fish are gonna bite today. We've also got some Sakoshi bugs. I think these are gonna be killers on the Ned rig, black and blue, little finesse. If we can get right in front of their face, I think this could be the, uh, the number one. More Shimmer Swimmers, different color. And we've also got a handful of Death Stalkers and a couple varying colors. And so we are gonna be throwing these guys out. And we're gonna see what we can't get out here and the limited amount of time we have on this golf course pond. Have a little bit of fun with y'all today. Let's go. All right, y'all. What we are going to start off with, I believe, is just this little three inch Shimmer Shad. Look at that little flash right here. Never thrown this little guy. And uh, we're gonna drop shot him today. I'm throwing it on casting gear. So this is not typical. Uh, so just forgive me for that. Normally you're throwing this on your spinning gear, maybe some lighter, uh, you know, eight, 10, 12 pound line. I'm rocking some 17 pound fluorocarbon with a quarter ounce uh, Carl's drop shot weight. Just a little one knot stickies hook. And that should do the deal today. I'm gonna see if uh, we can't just get a bite because the weather has been so up and down here in Texas. It is currently 38 degrees, 38 degrees, dude. I thought it was like at least in the forties. And, uh, and I shouldn't be complaining about temperature because I know a lot of you guys are dealing with much worse or even not open water. And so I'm gonna try finesse first and see if we can't get hit on this little guy right here. Look at this thing. Holy smokes. This is finesse if I've ever thrown it. All right, let's get this thing out there at this little dock over here. Nice little structure. There we go, got her free. That's a quick release on the old tree, tree species. Not gonna do us any good towards our slam, which is what we're going for. I don't know if I mentioned that, but we wanna try and catch a fish on every bait out of that box. Uh, so far in the first 15 minutes, no bites. The We knew it was gonna be a challenge today, but we're out here getting it done. I think we're gonna get hit here in a second. I need to find where these things are bunched up. And if I can nose up to them, Maybe they're willing to strike today. We got the uh, drop shot stuck in the tree. Had to break that one off. Right, all right, all right. I'm thinking next we go black and blue Ned Rig, y'all. There's quite a bit of grass, so I'll do this one with the weed guard. Although, I don't find these weed guards to do too much on these little mushroom head jig deals. Want to try another pond in here? Yeah. All right, I'll be right over. I think we're going to go try another pond, but let me get this Ned Rig tied on real fast. Breaking out these Sakoshi bugs. Nice and neatly packaged. This could be the winter domination tool. I'm feeling pretty good about this one, actually. Get this thing tossed on here. Okay. Koshi bug is rigged up. Let's hit the next pond. Oh yeah, pulling up to spot number two out here. We're gonna see if we can't tear it apart with the Ned rig. Feeling pretty good. Got a fish? No way. Oh my gosh, Ned rig first fish of the day. Yes. Wow. There we go. Oh my goodness. I was just about to update you guys with a, a sad, sobby little dance on how I was not catching nothing, and look at that. The Ned rig. <laughs> it's so. Oh. Yes, for the first fish of the day. I'm pumped on this one. Look, he's frozen solid. He won't even move. He's frozen solid. I'm going to straighten this guy out for a little. There you go. I need to really stretch him out if I'm going to make him look big for you guys, even on that GoPro. Uh, on, in fact, I should be holding him like this. <laughs> God, that feels good. What is it? February 39 degrees, man. Just hit 12 noon. The sun is up. Hardly. It's behind these clouds, man. And it's a grind out here thankful for this little dude oh my goodness 
what a beauty hit on that ned rig that mushroom head jig again uh the weed guard that after this catch is kind of finagled i'll have to fix that little weed guard just a small hook 17 pound fluorocarbon again it's not finesse uh, line it's really not finesse gear as far as the rod and reel is concerned i'm gonna get this little guy back in the water and we'll talk more about it oh thank you so much little buddy i do appreciate you i have the spinning set up in the truck and i was literally just about to go get it and uh, tie on uh, my second drop shot since I lost that first one in the tree. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna stick out this Ned rig and see if it won't uh, get a catch. And I was just all but losing hope. And you know what hits in the winter time, man? The finesse rig. Sometimes you just gotta downsize. This black and blue stands out in this still stained water. Even though there's slightly more visibility here, which I think is what helps those fish key in on something like that drop shot I'm about to try now because I'm going for a full slam this guy right here being black and blue really makes a difference so i'm just ooh, i'm pumped i'm pumped i hope you guys can feel it through the gopro man i'm excited first catch of the day hands are freezing cold time to get out the drop shot all right guys back at the truck first fish of the day feeling good i came out and i had another drop shot actually rigged up on my spinning setup so i'm uh, back here grabbing the goods man we need to hit the arsenal which is the carl's bait and tackle box <laughs> next on the agenda let's go ahead and rig this thing up drop shot style and get back on the water drop shot could be number two guys i think i'm going to take one of these shimmer swimmers out and instead of tossing it on maybe like a jig head and just kind of popping it along the bottom look at that right there this is a unique little presentation right here it's been super stained I might see if this gets any bites right here. Now there's multiple ways to fish the shimmer swimmer and uh, I haven't seen it fished like this right here. It almost looks like this thing's got two eyes. Look, we're not caring too much. It's pretty stained. I think this might just get a bite. Spinnerbait, there we go. There we go. All right. We are piecing this place apart slowly but surely, and that is the second bait. And I was kind of surprised, but it came on the mover. It came on the moving bait, you guys. That is the shimmer swimmer, and he choked it. He was not gonna let that thing go. So look, half decent water clarity, and the yellow shimmer swimmer performs. Extra sick. That was on a 3 8 ounce uh, Guggen Squad spinnerbait. But the Shimmer Swimmer is the trailer that was really getting it done. That is number two, you guys. And let me tell you what, these aren't the winter lunkers we are after, but we are psyched to be catching fish when it is this cold out. I'm so freezing. I'm like on the verge of giving up and continuing every few minutes as I walk the bank. And I've just been at it. And this was specifically the cast that I wanted to get this fish on. I threw uh, close to this tree all the way out and I cast it just out by that point where it's a little bit deeper. And I think there might be a couple bunched up on the structure. I think this guy chased it off of there. All right, let's let little guy go. Thank you for the fun, little buddy. Got our pictures. And that is that. I haven't thought, or thought. <laughs> I've definitely thought about catching fish close to the bank. I haven't caught any fish close to the bank. So I'm probably just going to cast this out as far as I can, work it out in the deep. And as I get closer, usually I would make sure I bring the retrieve in all the way to my feet because you never know when you're going to get hit but I have walked this whole pond have not seen any bass by the uh, in the shallows and so I just think they're out a little bit further and that's where I'm gonna try and get with this cast right here I've got some other ideas for this little guy some spots with some clearer water despite the rain yesterday I think I know of a few places 
Okay guys, back in the truck and we're making the first move to some other ponds outside of this community this morning. Uh, Christian had to leave before I even got to this one. Well, it's now this afternoon. I'm all mixed up right now. And so he missed out on all the catches. We have got two out of five baits secured. I think the blade bait is gonna be the trickiest one for me because I, I need to really get the kayak for that. So I might have to go by the Guggen Warehouse. Otherwise, it's just gonna be tricky. It's just gonna be tricky. So the saw craw and the shimmer shad. Mm, next, and those are two baits I love to throw or styles of baits that I love to throw. So let's go ahead and get the Texas rig and the drop shot back out on the water at a different pond. I think you guys are really going to enjoy the catches on this one. We've missed any big fish so far, so I'm hoping to get a big bite before this video is over for you guys. Stay tuned. Y'all, I'm feeling rejuvenated. <laughs> My hands have feeling. Chick-fil-A, mini. I got Starbucks. I just had me a little Dopio double espresso. And I know of a pond right down the street here. I have caught fish on flukes here. The water was pretty clear. And I'm just thinking that little shimmer shad looks just like those flukes, man. So I'm pretty pumped. We're gonna go ahead, hop over to this pond, and I think that little drop shot is gonna be the ticket. Catch y'all there. Well guys, bad news. Uh, the pond is officially chocolate milk. It is not clear at all. So I think I'm just gonna make a move. I just don't have the confidence at this pond like I had in the past with the clarity that it did have. So let's go ahead and make a move. We gotta find some clear water. All right, guys, I'm not trying to delay the fish catches any longer, but I have pulled up to a pond that looks very clear. I've fished this spot quite a few times. There's a really good visibility, a lot of good options as far as where I can cast. I know this is the back side of the place, or I guess this could be the front. The back side is on the back side of this building, and uh, this is looking pretty juicy. I might even toss the blade bait if I can get hits on those other two. No, no guarantees. I just want to get a catch on all these baits and have some fun with y'all today on the channel. So I'm stoked to be on here. Can't thank Mystery Tackle Box enough for allowing us the channel for the day. Let's get back on the water and actually catch something. Lastly, the sun is like out now. It's 40, but it's feeling pretty good. So I'm glad we got that spinnerbait catch earlier when it was very overcast. That's typically when you get the bites on those spinnerbaits. I think we lucked out with that catch earlier. So pretty pumped on that one. All right, all right, all right. Guys, when it's all said and done, here's what we've got. We have the little shimmer shad hooked up on the drop shot. I have gone ahead and I did Texas rig, one of the saw craws. This is, I believe, a 3 8 ounce weight. I would go with something maybe like a quarter typically. I think I'm just out of them or even like down, even down to an eighth, you know, in these cold waters. Just let that cross swim down a little bit slower. These ponds aren't very deep. This weight is a little, little heavy, but we're just going to rock and roll with it. I've got it on a uh, five watt uh, hook here. I believe it could be a four watt. I kind of dabble between the two. I don't really keep them too organized. That's Weston Smith for you. Anyways, Texas Red Craw cannot go wrong. And then I also have an alternative because I had talked about possibly swimming the craw. And I said, you know what, what the heck? So this last saw craw, we paired up with the chatterbait, just the typical Z-Man, the entry level one, the very cheap one. I didn't uh, cut any portions of the craw or rip any portions of the craw off because the skirt ends right about where the pinchers are. So it could affect the swimming if I took off one piece and was able to slide it up a little bit more. If those pinchers go past the skirt, then they won't be swimming as freely. And you really want that swimming action when you're tossing them on the back of this uh, chatterbait trailer. We don't know if we're gonna get a hit on this or the Texas rig first, but that is how we're gonna tear apart this pond is with these three rigs right here. Let's lock the truck and have at it. I think I'm gonna start off swimming this crawl by this dock real fast. If I can't get a hit, the blade is already effed. I definitely went through some grass. That's a shame. I picked up a leaf right on the retrieve and probably spooked any bass that I could have caught in the strike zone. So make a move to the crawl. Interesting. Make a little move. Just rolled up to the second spot here at this pond. Flipped over to the back side of the community center. Let's see if anything wants to hit by the bridge today. Water is looking real nice. Got one. Oh, guys, this one's actually the biggest one of the day came on this thing. No way. <laughs> guys, 
Everything has been so small. We're actually upgrading right here. Wow, this is the coldest fish of the day. Oh my gosh. There we go, you guys. On the little three inch shimmer shad. Or is it even three inches? I guess it is. The tail just cuts down. Look at that bass. I was wondering if we, I was going to get a little bluegill on that thing somehow, some way. But hey, this we will take. Heck yes. All right, let's get him back in the water and watch him swim away. This is going to be good. Go on, little buddy. Cruising. There he went. Look at his little dust trail. He said, shh. I know I could fish the Texas rig. Oh my gosh, I'm on the bridge. I'm literally on the bridge. There we go. <laughs> I know. God. Oh, that's not a bite. I know we could fish that Texas rig and probably get a hit because they're on the bottom. But I'm just going to throw this chatterbait for a minute and see what happens. I think I'm going to hit that one more time, then cast over here. This water seems to be flowing in to where it opens up and gets deeper. I'm thinking the Texas rig right there could be a pretty good idea. Otherwise, we are going to walk it down a little further. Okay. Here's what we're doing guys, we casted the Texas rig along here for quite a few minutes and the grass, the grass is like just subsurface and I'm thinking this chatterbait and the extra vibration might be able to get some uh, hungry fish to come out of that grass and attack. Uh, oh wow. Okay, we got a little knot guys. I would typically retie, but not today. We are gonna risk it because we got places to be. Wow. All right, guys. I don't know if they're feeling the craw today or if they're just not nose down to the very bottom. I'm going to try something that's not really... I never hear people talk about it. I'm sure people do it. Uh, maybe just ignorant people like me. I guess sometimes ignorance is bliss. What I'm going to do, you guys, is I'm going to drop shot the craw. I'm just curious. I know. Comment down below. Go ahead, negative or positive, I don't mind. I just think that maybe they want to crawl dancing around a little bit higher than uh, on the very bottom. I don't know. I never, again, really see this done. Don't know if it's going to work. But look, the Texas rig and chatterbait aren't working too much, so let's dance this crawl around a little bit. No, no way, no way, guys, biggest one of the day, on the crawl, drop shot, that was a few casts in, gotta be kidding me guys, they are willing to go after something that is just slightly off the ground, this guy is feisty, oh my gosh, and we barely got him, oh wow, that was pretty loose, good thing we kept that tight, I saw him hit, what a catch, what a catch guys, oh my gosh, literally almost rounds out the entire box that was the craw drop shotted i've never seen anybody i mean i'm sure it's i'm sure it's done i'm not trying to say i'm pioneering nothing if anything i think you guys are going to consider that to be very funny because here's the thing that catch was very unnatural if you're thinking about a crawl that's always hopping along the bottom maybe kind of swimming you know like i was just barely popping it and it was staying above the the floor here I'm gonna put him back in the water. Let's get this release. Look at all these crawdad holes. And you can tell this is like their primary food source. So I didn't know if it's this color that was throwing them off, but I really only have the one. So uh, let's get him back in the water. And that means only one thing. We're on to the last bait. Okay guys, we have done it. We're literally on the last bait of the day. And what's killer is blade baits are known to be a winter wonder. So I am pretty dang excited about this. But here's the thing, they're not made to be fished the way we're gonna fish it today. We're going completely out the box, getting creative. This water looks like chocolate milk, which is great because I plan on walking the rock edge with that blade bait just along the, the rock there. Maybe some fish are holding up against that heat uh, that the rock creates when the sun is shining down on it, specifically on that other side of the bank where the sun is really hitting it. I'm probably going to walk over there, see if we can't scoop up a big bass hugging the rock. Nothing today has been very shallow. All signs point to why this should not work, but we're going to go ahead and give it the last 20 to 40 minutes that I have to fish 
and see if we can't pull a crazy catch out of this place. Let's let the madness unfold. Let's walk this bank here, and then we'll go that away. No. Oh man, should I skip this bank? I think I should. We're just gonna go this way. Don't wanna leave any stone unturned. This is gonna be so bad if a big one hits. What is up with this stuff in here? What is going on with these bags? We gave that a solid like 45 minutes, if not more. It's been a bunch of fun, but I think we gotta call it. Thank you guys for rocking with me on this one today. Over on the Mystery Tackle Box channel, you guys had a ton of fun. Basically got the slam, but I had to head out, get over to work, and I wanted to maybe grab the kayaks and try and fish it off of those and just kind of jig it in deeper water uh, over maybe a school like you're kind of supposed to do with the blade baits. Didn't have the time, but we had a blast as always. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll catch y'all on the next one over here. Until then, peace out. <gasps>